Hello, this is Noreen Crone Finlay from CroneFinlay.com and ToddyTalksCrafts.com. I am the author of the wonderful book Potholder Loom Weaving. And I've been doing, uh, I'm working on a series of uh, video tutorials about color work on the various uh, potholder looms. Now this one is the Mighty Big Mama. And uh, she's a 12, she makes a 12 inch square. Um, so of course that means that the loom itself is larger than 12 inches. And the video that I'm going to do today is about how to do house tooth check on the um, on the potholder loom. And the uh, instructions for the hound's tooth check that I'm going to be showing you, plus a different way of finishing the lower and left hand edges. So I just want to give you as many techniques as possible. Because um, the more techniques you know, that gives you more creative options. Okay, so um, the um, doing the hound's tooth check on the 36 pack. The um, hound's tooth check is woven uh, in exactly the same way on the 36 peg uh, 12 inch Mighty Big Mama pot holder loom as on the 18 uh, peg 6 inch square standard size. Now the tiny 9 peg 3 inch pot holder loom and the 27 peg 9 inch pot holder loom will each have one extra strands of warp um, at the left hand because with Hound's Tooth Check you're working two strands of color A, two strands of color B across the entire um, um, span of the loom. And I'm doing this on the Mighty Big Mama and I have tied my yarn color A to the button at the lower corner. If you don't have a loom that has that button then you'll just have to tie around the lower edge to um, secure it. Please refer back to the previous video in this series, which is the Simple Stripes, and that will show you uh, more closely how I'm working this warp um, method uh, that has the warp strands uh, uh, marching along the lower edge. I developed this technique for weaving tapestries on um, uh, potholder looms, and I really like the way it works for uh, color work. And so you take your yarn between the first and second um, nails on the lower right hand side of the loom and up between the first and second nails on the upper hand. This is different than our normal way of warping and you're going to go uh, each set of warp pegs, you're going to go to the left and come down to the right. Same thing here, repeat, go from the lower to the upper to the left, come back down to the right, skip two nails, and then go to the left, around, and to the right. Work the next set of nails to the left, to the right, and down. And I'm going to now continue doing this, skipping two nails on the lower edge and the upper edge, and I'm going to work all the way across and I'll come back to you when I have completed this process of two sets of warp strands, gap, two sets, all the way across to the left hand side. There, I've worked all the way across the loom and now with color B I've made a slip knot and I've pulled it out and it's long enough to reach from the top to the lower edge of the loom and I have just tightened that up and I'm going to now work my way across doing exactly the same thing. Up to the left, down to the right, skip two nails and dance across the loom. And I will continue warping the loom and come back to when the loom is completely warped. Okay, I have uh, completed the warping across the loom and now I'm going to take my shed stick and weave it under all the strands on the first 
nail and over all the strands on the second nail. And I'm going to go under over all the way across the loom and the um, the shed stick will live in the upper gap there at right at the top of the nails. So I'll be right back. Whoops, my dog is sneezing. Gujun tight. Okay, so I'll be right back when the um, when I've got the shed stick woven in. The shed stick is now woven in along the upper edge of the loom. Now, because my um, weaving hook does not reach all the way across, I'm going to weave the rows in two passes. I am scooting for the first and all the odd number rows. I'm starting at the middle and I scoot along in the open space um, the, um, that the shed stick makes. Now, I have folded color A um, over my finger and I am pulling it through and the yarn is coming out between the first and second loops I mean nails. Now I'm pulling across to give myself enough yarn to go all the way across and I'm going to scoot my hook in, pick up that loop that I dropped bring it across and place it on the first nail and whoops I've wrapped around here don't want to do that okay and I'm going to give it a tug on the left hand side row two I'm going to again start at the middle and I'm going to go uh, over the strands that were sitting on top of the shed stick and under the strands that are below the shed stick and this second row is also going to be woven in the green in color A or color number one and I scoot my hook down to the lower edge I'm going to full, pull out a fold of yarn and plunk it onto the hook in the beak pull it across and bit of a tie on there and drop that at the middle. Now I go to the um, right hand side and notice how I prefer to work close to the top when I'm doing the uh, weaving uh, the pickup process with the hook because it's easier for me to see what's happening up at the top of the loom. So that is the first two rows and I pull up on my left hand strand of yarn coming off the ball. Two strands held together. Now rows three and four, I have pulled out a loop of color two and I scoot it in starting at the middle, scoot it across to the left hand side. I go through between the third and fourth nails. I come all the way across drop my strand, scoot through and bring my hook down and then I catch my loop and place it on the third nail. Now I'm going to do the fourth row and again I'm starting at the middle and I'm picking up the strands that were below the shed stick and I'm going over the strands that were under the shed stick. I've picked up a loop from my ball of yarn and uh, pulled the fold through, drop it, and now go over, under, over, under, across to the center of the loom. And the loom has handy dandy little arrows at the midline because when I was designing the loom, I wanted to know where my midpoints were on the lower sides and upper sides and both sides. So all four edges have a midpoint. And this is what gives me, push down, push down, this is what gives me the hound's tooth check. So I'm going to repeat these uh, four rows all the way to the top of the loom and when I'm done I'll come right back. I'm almost at the top and I find that as I get closer to the shed stick 
it gets harder and harder to um, do the um, pickup rows. And so what I do is I just work over shorter um, spans of uh, fewer warp strands at a time to get myself across the row. And so here I am just working over and under. So I have, I end up with four sets of, uh, of uh, warp strands on the hook at any given time. Or you could even go, if you wanted to, you could go one set of strands at a time. That works. Or two sets of warp strands. Whatever it takes. Just because it is a little bit, um, it's, it's a bit of a, a tight squeeze there at the very end. Now, whoops. Yeah. And so sometimes what I'll do is I will even switch to a smaller, oh, that one didn't come through. There we go. I'll switch to an even smaller. Yeah, so I switched to a smaller crochet hook just to um, make that picking up process go more easily. You can see here it's it gets pretty tight. And also too with this particular yarn is a cotton yarn. So there's not a lot of give in it. And this will be my last row with using the um, the shed stick. So I can scoot across and then uh, when I'm done this row, I will be pulling the shed stick out. And the very last row is going to be like the previous row that I just did, picking up just a couple strands at a time. Um, so I'm going to pop that loop onto here. And now out comes the shed stick. And I'll finish this last row using the same uh, process that I did with the previous one, where I picked up one at a time across the row. And I'll come back when this last row is woven. I have finished weaving the last row. I've snipped off color two. And now I'm going to take color one around the three sides of the loom. And I'm going to snip that off and drop my yarn from the ball off of the um, off of the <laughs> off the workbench here. And now what I'll do is I'm going to just show you how this edge is going to be finished. This is kind of a hybrid finish because I'm using two different ways of finishing the edge uh, on, on the same square. Um, sides one and two, I am chaining up in the usual manner. Do, 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 do. But what I'm going to do with side one is I'm going to use the stitched, I mean, pardon me, side three. No, that's side. Okay, the left hand side and the lower side. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, and I'm going to use the, um, the stitching uh, technique for uh, clean finishing this edge that is on page 127 of the Potholder Loom Weaving Book. So I'm just going to thread the uh, yarn end into the needle and see how the left hand edge has long loops and so does the lower edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle through that first stitch, the first loop, and I'm going to take the yarn around the needle and take it through and pull up. There we go, pulled up. Now I'm going to be going into every loop. See how I have a loop here and I'm kind of tapping the nail 
and I am just simply going to I'm going to do like a blanket stitch. Basically, I'm taking the um, the yarn, the needle through, taking the yarn behind the nail, and pulling up. There we go. Somehow I have managed to do that wrong. Let's let's just fix that. There we go. There. Through the loop. Merrily we go along. Okay. There. And pull up. And now I've got the the I think I've got myself organized here. And goes in under all the loops that are on the nail. And stitching. Now you can actually just do, um, I'm doing a blanket stitch, but you can actually just do um, a regular stitch, just picking up. Okay, let's just, here's what I mean by a regular stitch. Taking it through and it'll be a wrapped stitch there. And it's very simple. What you're doing is you're catching and securing all the uh, the loops that are on every nail. So since I've switched over to the plain running stitch, we'll just keep going with that. And so I'm going to work around the um, around the edge of the left hand side and the lower side of the uh, loom to secure all the stitches. So I will, I'm going to work down to this corner and then come back to you. There you can see that this edge, um, just by doing that running stitch along uh, here, um, the edge is all beautifully captured. So at this end, at the start, started with the blanket stitch, but then switched over to the running stitch, which I actually prefer, but either one is fine. And now I am going to do a, uh, two blanket stitches over the long uh, corner here. And to do that, the I've taken the yarn under the corner stitch, and I am going to go again and over the yarn from the needle and that captures that long corner there and then I'm just going to keep going merrily along just the same way I did along the left hand side I now stitch along the lower side and when I've got the lower side done I'll come back to you and you can see now what I do is I go in under all the loops that are on the nail and I come up between the nails to catch everything that's on the nails and that's going to give me that very nice clean finish. I'll be back to you when the lower edge, which looks like an upper edge right now, but when this is the lower edge, the starting edge of the warp strands with all those long strands on them, when this is all stitched along and I'm back to the starting corner. So I'll be back then. There we go. This edge is all done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the loom around and I'm going to do for the for this hybrid edge. Now this, which was originally the right hand edge, and the upper hand edge, I'm going to do just the usual um, chaining off. So I lift off two sets of loops, and the second loop goes through the first set of loops. 
and then I pick up and the one that just came off the nail comes through the one that's still on the hook. So I'm just going to trot around the edge and finish chaining off these two edges and then I'll come back. There, I have chained all the way across the upper edge and now I'm going to pull the cut ends through to lock it. I think I'll go through a second time. Just, I really like to make sure it's secure. And now to take my edge, I'm just going to go back up a bit here. Scoot up a bit. And to lift the square off the loom, I just slide along with the end of my, with my finger or the end of my hook and simply lift the weaving off the loom now. Let's go further up. Excellent. Okay, so I scoot along. And lift it off. And there we go. A beautifully complete square that does need to be steamed and patted and there and 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 then it's done now the 36 and 18 uh, big uh, looms the mighty big mama and the um, the uh, standard size have two 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 all the way along and then two 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 rows woven uh, from lower edge to upper edge but what if you want to do this on the nine peg or the 27 peg loom you're gonna have to adapt because you're gonna have one extra nail set of nails either at the far edge when you're warping or why not um, put three um, sets of warp strands in the very center. So I will just show you what it looks like when you weave the um, on the uh, the 27 peg which is the pro size and how that changes ever so slightly the hound's tooth just lifting up here a bit. I just wanted to show you um, the how the 36 peg loom is just that little bit bigger than the um, 27 peg loom. The 27 peg loom will give you a 9 inch square. The 36 peg loom gives you a 12 inch square. So this is the pro size. This is the mighty big mama size. So you can see I have warped the pro size loom uh, using the same looping technique that I did on the 36 peg loom. But I did a little cheat. Can you see here how at the center I have put three sets of warp strands at the very middle. And I'm going to now with color one. And color two is just going to be all two sets of strands all the way across. So I'll do that and be right back. So I have got the loom completely warped and the shed stick uh, woven in. Now it's really important. Well, I don't know if it's really important, but you know, anyhow, it's kind of important to... Um, weave to start your weaving with color one and we're going to just keep on weaving the same way that I wove on the 36 peg loom and um, doing the the using the shed stick for rows one and all the even row um, odd numbered rows Pull that back and 
then the even numbered rows all are picked up rows. So what's going to happen is you're going to weave two colors, uh, like two rows of color one and then two rows of color two up to the middle and then at the middle of the loom it's going to be three rows of color one. So I'm going to weave my way up to the middle and then I'll be back. And here I am right at the middle and I've woven two uh, rows of the green and now I am just going to weave that third row of green and then after I have woven my third row of green I will finish the square by weaving two rows of green, two rows, well, two rows of purple, two rows of green to the very top. And so you can see you do have that slightly larger check um, in the middle. And um, if that makes your brain go, oh, I'll show you what it looks. I'll weave um, one on the, the nine peg loom using um, two, 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 and then one at the side, which I have woven the entire pro-sized square and I am just in the process of stitching off the, the two sides with the long loops and so it's exactly the same process as what I used for the 36, in, uh, 36 nail loom. Now, I'm just going to turn this so that it is aligned um, in the same way as I wove it. I'm just going to back up a bit. I just want you to see that the it's still houndstooth, but I have adjusted so, so that to, to just work that extra uh, set of warp strands in and turn it into a design element right in the center of the loom. And I think if you didn't know it was there, you probably just, it wouldn't bother you in the least. So it's a, it's a great way of doing houndstooth on the 27 peg uh, pro size potholder loom. And there's the houndstooth on the 27 peg pro size loom. And so, yeah, you do have, like, if you uh, weave it with the extra s set of warp strands in the middle, there is that bit of a, a pattern, sort of like, eh -eh. but hopefully it's not that disturbing. And so that's on the 27 peg loom. So I've been weaving um, the previous samples all on wooden looms and um, you can also weave the houndstooth uh, with yarn on metal looms. With the metal loom you'll need to tie your yarn to the lower uh, right hand corner and you're going to then go up and to the left of that first peg down to the right and around your next peg and again skip to so you're and then on to the next so you're um, weaving the uh, 18 peg uh, houndstooth in exactly the same way as the houndstooth that I wove on the 36 uh, peg loom. So I'll just get this all warped and you'll be able to see how even on the um, on the metal loom it's exactly the same as on the wooden loom. There! I'm warped and ready to weave and I've got my shed stick woven in. I've gone under all the loops on the first peg, over the second, under the third, and over, under, over, under, over, under. 
So I am going to now weave just like I did my the thirty the thirty six peg uh, loom. I will weave two rows of the green and two rows of the purple all the way to the top. And that will give me, whoops, have to just grab that. Uh, that one has come undone. So I'm going to sneak my hook in under here and pull that loop back up and tie it on again because we want that first corner to be nice and tight. But, like I always say, it's good when I have something like that happen because it says, hey, here's what to do. So just play around with it until you can get it tightened up again. Okay, so I am now going to just weave up the 18-peg houndstooth check square. And since I'm going to be doing it all the same as I did the um, 36 and 20, well, 27 peg wasn't quite the same, but I will just carry on weaving until I've got the whole square done. And the, um, the finishing process, exactly the same as the 36 uh, peg square. So see when I got this woven. I am now uh, finishing the uh, edge of the um, six inch square of uh, Hound's Tooth Check. I just wanted you to see that it's really important when you're stitching around the, uh, the two edges that have the long loops on them that you go in and and are right there uh, in the empty space of the peg right there in the middle and that you come up under the long edges there so that absolutely everything is secure so in at the center, under the long edges, the long loops on the outside. And that will give you a beautifully finished edge. And then, of course, this, these two edges I'm going to just chain around. But these two edges have the stitched finish. And here is the um, uh, houndstooth check woven on the six inch standard size loom. This time I wove it on a metal loom, works beautifully. And so there's, there we have the 36 inch, 36 peg, 12 inch, the 27 peg, nine, and the, and then this one is the, uh, 18 peg, 6 inch. And next, I'm going to show you um, the uh, alternate way of doing the um, uh, the houndstooth when you have the extra row, um, i.e. on the 27 or 9 peg. But because I'm playing chicken with my yarn and I'm just about out of yarn, I'm going to do this on the 9 peg. So that's next. So, step one of warping for the check, houndstooth check on um, the odd number of rows. Uh, in this case, it's the nine peg three inch loom. So, I have warped in exactly the same way as I did for all the other looms, meaning that I've gone around and done the loop. But this time, of course, I'm ending with having the one strand uh, set of strands on the last uh, set of nails. Now I'm going to warp with the second color 
and I will just have two sets of nails. Um, and there we go, that's it. So my first row, okay, I will weave in a shed stick. And my first row, I am only going to weave one row of the purple because I I have the the last row here is with the purple. So I'm just going to weave that one row of purple and then I will start working with the two rows of each color. The next row will be green and I'm going to do one row of green and whoops two rows of green there we go now two rows of purple okay so I have the two rows of purple now two rows of green and then I'll be finishing up with the last two rows will be purple and I'm going to be doing the same finishing uh, technique that I did on all the other looms and uh, and so then you'll be able to see the um, <laughs> sorry for the sneezing dog Gesundheit um, then you'll be able to see the difference between um, ending with a single row and how that changes um, the, um, the the hound's tooth check uh, compared to what I did on the uh, 27 peg loom with sneaking a third row in. So I am just about ready to start my finishing. And then I will uh, come back and show you how it looks with the slightly truncated uh, version of the uh, houndstooth weave. And here is the um, nine peg version of the houndstooth check done with just the one row of um, purple on the lower edge and one row of purple up the um, uh, left hand side. So that gives you the the sense of how it changes if you just move your if you're working on the 27 peg loom or the 9 peg loom then uh, if you prefer you can go with um, this is with single um, or on the um, let's see if we can come up a bit here on the 27 peg loom you, um, you can see where I kind of cheated it in with the extra strands being in the middle. But they all work beautifully. So I'm just going to grab and stack here. We have the, let's go up a little higher here. A little higher. Okay. So here's my pile of the swatches and samples that I've woven here. So the nine peg, the 18 peg, the 27 peg, and the 36 peg. So you can see that the um, the houndstooth uh, works just beautifully on all four looms. And I'm going to show you what I'm planning to do with all of these bits, as well as a few other pieces that I have woven and uh, I'm going to go get the latchet loose. So I have a little bit of yarn left, not much, and I'm going to get to work with the latchet lucet. And I think if I show you these gorgeous handles, now these are ones that I designed, and then uh, Gary McFarland of Dubray Ridge Looms um, has uh, taken and worked his magic with his CNC program, because I asked for the Celtic interlaces around the edges. 
and um, I, I have they come unfinished so I just put a layer of varnish two coats of varnish on them so I bet you know what I'm going to be doing with these and with these and with these but I have to go away and do that now and when I've got it done I'll come back I went off with my Lutchet Lucid and I made Lucid cord and I put Lucid around the 9 peg, the 18 peg, the 27 peg squares because they're going to become pockets. And I took my 6 inch uh, pot holder heart loom and I wove a heart and I used up every single smidgen of green yarn and it's going to become a pocket and I wove more of the of the 36 peg squares and they're going to become a basket. I love baskets. Baskets are so useful. Now this basket because it's going to have beautiful handles on it. Where did I put the handles? I put the handles in a good place. I'll have to go find them. Anyhow, this basket is going to become a basket now because I'm going to stop the camera and go sew it all up and come back and show you a wonderful basket. See you right away. Well, I have finished the um, putting together of this very large basket. Well, it's not large, large, but it is 12 inches square. And what I did was I sewed the 27 peg um, pocket. First of all, I stitched the um, the heart on to make it a good place for putting the comfort bears and the bunny from the book is in the 27 peg pocket and the um, the basket gives me a wonderful opportunity to just mention while we are living in these strange and mysterious and unsettling times we need to find ways of creating comfort for ourselves and for other people. So keep on making the little comfort bears because, oh my goodness, we need all the comfort we can get. And Albert Einstein agrees. Now, on the back of the bag, okay, so um, I'll, I'll stop the camera and turn the bag around so you can see the other pockets on the other side of this bag or basket. The houndstooth basket. So here's the other side of the houndstooth check basket. The uh, six inch square is now the um, is now one pocket and the three inch square is another. Perfect for little treasures. Um, oh I should also mention that I did uh, stitch lucid cord around the upper edge before uh, and I sort of did little tweedles at each corner. There's a tweedle there too. And um, I stitched the handles on after I had stitched the cord on. Now the handles are ones that I designed and um, uh, Gary McFarland at Dewberry Ridge Looms makes. And I don't know if you can see the beautiful, there, beautiful uh, engraving on them. They are just lovely. Anyhow, it's time to make things beautiful again, my friends. So get your looms out. I'm going to keep making videos showing different wonderful techniques on the potholder loom. And I'm also mulling over um, a project for you to do if you are someone who is caring for, for uh, kids right now. You might want to have some fun potholder loom weaving to do with children. So... I will share some of that with you soon. So, oh yes, and I don't know if I mentioned, but there are the looms that I used to make this particular houndstooth check ba uh, basket. The three inch, the six inch, the six inch heart, the 27 peg, which is a nine inch square, and the 36 peg, um, 12 inch square. So, happy weavings. And don't lose heart, dear ones. Don't lose heart. Stay connected and uh, do all those things that we know we need to do right now 
taking care of ourselves, taking care of our community, and um, getting through the pandemic in the best and most gracious and loving way we can. Let's all just hold the thought of miracles in our hearts and minds. Talk to you soon. Big hugs.